This is a jewelry armoire I found on the side of the road. I rescued it and painted it about two years ago. As much as I love the floral transfer on the front, the rest of it is not really my style anymore. The plan is to update this piece with a moody and dramatic transformation. Because this was my piece, I don't have to use a TSP cleaner or anything. I'm just using a wet rag with some water just to make sure that there's no dust on it and we can paint right over because I used Dixie Belle's chalk mineral paint when I first painted it. Then I need to remove all the hardware and I used a mold from Redesign with Prima on the front. So I wanna remove that too because I have a would you bend that I wanna put there in its place. I tried to use just a regular putty knife to remove it, but I could not get it to come off. And I have to rewatch that video because whatever glue I used worked so well. I tried a couple different things and it just wouldn't budge. Then I remembered what always works for me is heat add some heat i just have this crafting little heat gun and i'm warming up the glue underneath anytime i have something that has glue underneath if you just rewarm the glue underneath it's much easier to take off And now since my surface is a bit of a mess now, I'm just gonna use a fine sanding pad to smooth everything out. And then I go through the piece with my sanding pad and just make sure that I'm sanding all of that paint down smooth. I'm not trying to remove it. I'm making sure that there's no brush strokes or you know, any um, anything. I just want it to be nice and smooth. Now I'm using Mint by Michelle's decoupage paper called Moody Florals. I did a table a couple years, maybe a year ago, with this decoupage paper and it is my favorite table of all time. Um, so I think that I love it so much, I will love it on this jewelry armoire. This decoupage paper comes in two different sizes, A1 and A3, and I believe this is the smaller size, it's the A3. When I first found this jewelry armoire on the side of the road, there were flowers on the front and there were flowers on the top. So I'm gonna do that once again. So I laid my jewelry armoire on its back and now I'm just trying to figure out which way is up and which way is down for me. Um, this can go any way. You can put it on the top of a table and it can go long ways or vertically, or you can do it horizontally. So it's just however you like. I'm using some plastic wrap to bunch up in a little ball so that when I am decoupaging, I wanna get some of the wrinkles out and I wanna make sure that my paper's on really good. And instead of using my fingers and risk ripping it, the plastic adds as a little barrier in between and it just helps it go on nice and smooth. So for my glue, I'm using Verithane's water-based polyurethane, and I just like to go in small rows. My biggest struggle with decoupage is always the placement. Every single time that I put a decoupage paper on something, I decide that I want to move it over. It, it never fails me. Um, so I end up taking it off and then I have to put it back on in... And then it goes pretty smooth after that, but it's always that initial where I want it to be. Um, that's like the hardest part for me to figure out. Someone messaged me the other day and was asking me about the lines on the decoupage paper. Um, how do you soften them up? And I'm gonna show you really quick. You can just rip the decoupage paper. Now you can use a little bit of water and a brush to do this, or you can just rip it. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We're going to paint all the black parts with some black paint to cover it. So instead of you being able to see the rectangle of the paper, 
now it's gonna look a little bit more camouflaged because we're ripping it. There are some pointy, tiny little screws where the knobs go. I'm just poking the decoupage paper right through. And this is gonna give me a little bit of pulling, so I'm gonna grab my water mister and just give the paper a tiny mist. And that's so that when I'm applying my paper, I have a little bit of, um, I'm able to tug on it a little bit. The water helps the paper to just stretch a little bit so that I can get it down and nice and smooth. If you've tried decoupaging before and you had a hard time, I highly recommend using these smaller papers. They're a lot easier to apply. And if you're trying for the first time, you could also try the smaller ones first just so that you can get used to the feel of things. I always decoupaged with napkins. I never really used any of these papers. And when I first started using them, I did have a difficult time. I, um, I'm not a huge fan of when there's a ton of wrinkles in there, but the more you do it and the more you practice, um, the better you'll get. And that's for sure, because this one comes out with barely any wrinkles. Sometimes the wrinkles are pretty though. Um, if you have some in there, I think they add so much character. It just depends on wh what you're doing, I guess. But um, yeah, if you're having a difficult time or anything like that, just practice and practice and I know you'll get better. It's like everything else that we do. So then to go with Moody Florals, I'm gonna use Moody Florals 2 on the top. I decided to rip off a little bit of the flower on the back where I could cover with black paint because in case I wanted that flower to come out the side, I had a little piece of it. And I'm following the same exact process on the top as I did for the decoupage paper on the front. And when I was almost done, I decided to rip the edges off because we're gonna paint that and I don't want my line to be so distinct. Now I just need to wait for it to dry and it looks kind of scary right now, but just stay with me. So I let it dry overnight. I came back and I'm just using my razor blade to split where the drawers open and close. I open the drawers and I'm just sanding all the edges. I always clean it up and just make it look nice and smooth. And if I need to add any more sealer, if on the edges maybe it's coming off a little bit, this is when we're gonna apply a little bit of sealer and press down. 
I follow this process almost every single time that I decoupage. Now I went through every drawer and everything looks nice, so I'm going to add just one more coat of sealer over the decoupage paper, and I wait until that dries to do anything else. Now then my next step is to add some paint, and I'm using Dixie Belle's Caviar. I add a total of two coats of caviar on this piece. I add one coat, I wait for it to dry, and then I go back and I add my second coat. When I'm adding the caviar, I'm going as close as I can to the flowers. I want to cover up the paper because I don't want you to be able to see the difference in the colors. I've decided to paint over all of the gold. I'm just going to paint my caviar right over all of those beautiful designs. I'm going to use something else. Even on the legs, I'm going to paint the legs. That gold is so bright and I just, I want to tone it down. I don't want this to be a really um, bright piece. I want it to just all flow together really nicely. The beauty about these decoupage papers are that you can paint on top of them to suit your needs for your piece. Like for this piece particularly, that little um, reddish pink part on the side that I'm painting right now, it doesn't make a lot of sense um, for this certain piece because I don't have those colors on the front. So if I just paint right over it, it looks like it's all going to go together very nicely. And if you're ever having an issue where you feel like you can see the edge of the paper way too much, just grab a super fine sanding pad and sand it nice and smooth and then you won't be able to see it. I mean, it might be a little bit there, but not very noticeable at all. So I'm just sanding the edge and then I add another coat of caviar right on top of it and it's barely noticeable. Remember at the beginning where we took the mold off? I'm gonna replace it with this Would You Bend piece. I wanna be able to add a knob to it, so I'm just taking my drill and I'm 
drilling a little hole right in the center. Then I'm using a heat gun to heat up my would you bend and make it really pliable. It's literally what it's called. It's wood that you can bend. So now that it's bendable, I can add my glue. I'm using the Tight Bond Original Glue. I add it to the back. I just spread it around with my brush and then I place it where I want it to be on my piece. I'm focusing on lining the holes up. There's already a hole where the previous knob was, so I'm just gonna line that up, make sure everything's nice and straight, and then I press down for just a few seconds. And to make sure that it's on really, really well, I'm using my heat gun and I'm heating it up a little bit. And that heat gun's also gonna help for any of that glue that squirts out when I press down. It's gonna help me to be able to remove it um, much easier. I'm spraying a little water with my mister and using a paintbrush just to scoop out some of that glue that came out. Now while that's all drying, I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes. I'm using this syringe with a needle on it. I got a box of disposable ones from Amazon. I'm going to fill it with Verithane's water-based polyurethane and I'm going to shoot any bubbles that I see in my decoupage paper. It turns out I only have one bubble and you can't really see it so I tried to crop in here so that you could see where I'm filling it in. This for me is by far the best method that I've used to try to get any bubbles out. Sometimes air gets trapped underneath and these needles are just the greatest way because you can't see the holes they're just you know microscopic like they're it's a needle size hole so you can't really see it um, and it, it just works so good now we're moving right along and I decided to paint all of the hardware black for now I also painted the would you bend black but for some reason I didn't record that part This is Posh Chalk Precious Patina, and this is the color Royal Gold. This is what I'm going to use to enhance all the details on the piece. I chose this color because it's not super, super bright. I'm looking for that sort of bronzish gold, and I think this will be absolutely perfect. I'm not trying to fully cover the designs. I just want them to look a little bit aged. I want them to still have the black peeking through, but also just a little bit, almost like it used to be a shiny gold, and now it's just like aged and moody and gorgeous. <laughs> This product is also water-based, so if you make any mistakes or you decide you don't want it on something, you can just paint right over it, and it's super easy to do. Oil-based is a lot more trickier, so I really like this product. In order to complete the look, I needed to add some of the patina on the legs. I don't want to cover the entire leg, but just a little bit. I 
And to seal the piece, I'm using the sprayer. For me, this is the best way to seal. Um, I don't use it all the time for painting, but I've come to really like how the sealer um, works in the sprayer. You don't have to water it down, you just add it. I just added the Verithane's water-based polyurethane and I get such an even coat. I don't really have to worry about that streaking. Um, I added three coats in total because I just wanted to make sure that I was fully covered. I just wait until it's completely dry and then I add another coat. Here's a reminder of what it looked like before. And here it is now. I love it now. Before it was okay. I never really loved it. Now I just, I absolutely love this so much. The decoupage papers look gorgeous. They look like they were meant to be on there. And the, the gold, the royal gold, it's not so in your face like the other gold was. It just gives it that little something extra. It, I don't know, I'm so happy about this piece. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Did I fix it or did I make it worse for you? What do you think? And if you love this decoupage paper, then you have to check out this video where I used it and then did a resin pour on top. And I will see you next week with another furniture makeover.